I mean, I started in polio in 87, and the, the World Health Assembly resolved in 1988. And actually for the next, uh, let's say, 12 years until 2000, there was rapid progress, uh, more than 99% decrease in cases. Uh, very few countries still were endemic in 2000. And then from 2000 to 2010, it uh, kind of went sideways. There was not much progress. Uh, we still learned a lot. We brought new vaccines to bear. And uh, in the last three years, there's been, uh, I would say, uh, more rapid momentum. And we are at the situation now we have never been. We are less than uh, 200 cases at the moment worldwide. So we are in November now. So. We talked about 99% decrease in 2000. We are comfortably over 99.9% .9 decrease now. But the problem is, uh, again, the 0.01%. Uh, we need to get to the finish line. But there is a fighting chance now, I feel. The key, I mean, many people tell you, I mean, it's basically you need to have a vaccinator who puts potent vaccines into the mouths of children. And for polio, you need to do that everywhere. You can't have any community that's not touched or not reached. And that has uh, so far been the, the major, major problem. The countries where this is, where polio eradication has not happened are primarily, you know, along the border of Pakistan, Afghanistan, some areas of Afghanistan and northern Nigeria. And these are mostly areas where health system are weak, access is a problem, security may be a problem as well. So you have everything comes together and the program has been, I think, slow in learning, but it's learning how to get to those kids now as well. So, so that's why I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we actually will get there. Yeah, the, uh, you know, there are big debates now. What is the legacy of the polio program? And uh, for Many people, you know, some people feel like, yes, uh, let's uh, apply. We know now how to reach these kids. Let's just, uh, measles and rubella eradication are clear, natural for, for next. Uh, other people feel, you know, it should be used for health system strengthening for, you know, other things, routine immunization primarily. But this infrastructure at the moment, in many places, it's the only uh, infrastructure that exists. So polio has more than 10,000 people in the field. Uh, routine has very, very few. Measles has nothing. So for whatever is happening with routine and measles, it's uh, primarily already dependent on the polio infrastructure. And these are trained people. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it would be a shame if this would, would disappear and people would go all disappearing to other, other places. Rotarians sought about polio eradication before WHO ever got involved. And, uh, you know, in the end they will have raised more than a billion dollars from their membership to this purpose. So, in, in a way, it's uh, already a model for other disease control or, or uh, eradication initiatives as well. And I think it's, uh, for me, it's kind of very special to uh, so this is not necessarily something that we from Geneva, you know, we feel like we want to do that. But you already have a constituency who, have, who is active in most countries of the world and their membership have already come up with uh, what they want to do, but also put their money on the table in terms of supporting it as well.